All right. So we've went so far with um, with the program or the agenda that we've agreed. So we started with start how to create a small project in P6, which was a quick demo, and then we exported the XCR file, and we have discussed together how we can understand what is XCR file structure. So let's consider these sections as done, and then in this session we're going to discuss how we are going to install Py P6 XCR library and then start doing some code to read through it. So for that, I usually use uh, VS Code, which is a free open source version, which is available for anybody to use. So I would recommend that you, um, yeah, there are a lot of videos and tutorials on how to install that in, in your, in your uh, machine. So opened um, Visual Studio Code, but I don't have um, the PyPXER library, so how I'm going to do, how I'm going to install it. So, first of all, if you went to the, 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 the GitHub repo, which you will find the link in the description of these videos and previous videos, the, it says that in, in order to install a copy, you just need to run this command. So, let's copy this command and go back to our Visual Studio code. And in order to run it, we need to open a terminal. So by just going to terminal and new terminal in here, that will open a terminal uh, in, in, in your computer and paste the code and it will install Py, P, uh, Py uh, P6XR. Um, how to confirm that the installation went, I mean, it say that it has installed properly or successfully, so there is no problem, but I think for us to confirm that, you can just type Python, and there you can just import um, XER parser. And if that imports with no problems, then you, we're good to go. Uh, now we need to exit that, and there are different ways of coding. You can code in the shell or in, 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 in here directly, but that wouldn't be saved, so you won't be able to run it every time that you want to run it. So an alternative way that I usually prefer is to have a file. Um, let's call it test.py, and it has to have a py extension. And I would start by saying that the first thing that we need to do is import the, the library. And the my preferred way of importing it to say from xcr parser dot reader import reader so this what will be the file reader or what we can do in order to read the file uh, what we need an object or to, to read the file um, so we need to create an object to read the file so let's call it xcr file is equal to reader and then it says you need to provide a file name so because I have the file in the same folder what I'm going to do is to write py p6 xer dot xer which is a file name in here so now we have created the reader after that we now we have all the file into is stored into that variable xer file so let's start with printing or getting um, the, the the projects within that xer file so we what we can in order to do that we just need to loop through all the projects in the file so i would say for project in xer file dot projects so here I'm saying that go and fetch the projects, all the projects, and then give me one by one of these projects in that loop. Uh, I would say print project dot um, name, which um, would be project short name. All right. So if that all is fine, when we run it, we should get the projects so you can say you can see here what it did it just parsed the file so it said that 100% read so that's fine and then it printed by 
P6XER, which is the project name. Uh, but what we can do also is uh, do something differently here. So I would say there and then project. So what does the, the this command dir does is it provides you a list of all the uh, functions and and properties and variables that you can access from that uh, project uh, variable so let's run it and, and and we'll see what we have have in there project is not defined oh sorry i haven't saved this so i just need to save it and rerun that again so what we got this time differently is that we have all these functions that we can run um, using that XER file. So, I mean, like we can get, uh, I, I can say here, we can get WBSs. Uh, we can have uh, task codes and activities. So activities here and we can uh, uh, get add date, add by name. So it's when it's added and who added it, uh, the project to, 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 the, to the system. We'll get all these sort of things, which again, you can cross reference them from here. Uh, so let's now, as we got this, move into uh, WBS. So this will read the project. Let's go for another loop. So for WBS in XER file dot WBSs. And I know the naming might not be the best, but that's what I came up with. So. <laughs> Uh, after that we need to print and we say wbs dot um, I think it's wbs name that we need and when we run this we got the project name which is printed from this line of code and then we got test project for XER which is the name of the top level wbs mobilization, design, construction, and handover. And these are exactly what we have in here, mobilization, design, construction, handover. Um, let's also do something different here. So let's do WBS dot WBS ID and then print also parent WBS dot WBS parent ID and hit run. Uh, it doesn't have WBS parent ID, so it might be parent ID. We 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 need to look into that in order to make sure that we get this right. So let's go here and see in the WBS we had parent WBS ID, so that's, yeah, my bad. Parent, w, yeah, it, yeah, that seems to be fine. And then I will run this script. And here you go. So we have, um, this is the ID, project name, and then the parent ID. And you can see that all of these are referring to that parent. So now we managed to get all the WBSs from that uh, file. Let's go and start working with the activities. So let's put some comments here. So um, get project CR file. And then here this will get uh, WBS from XCR file and the last one for today will be get activities from XCR file then we say for activity in XCR file dot activities and then we'll print 
activity dot um, task name task name and also we can do activity dot wbs id um, yeah i would say let's add here a text saying wbs id and save this and now let's rerun it uh, so what we have here is yeah the project and all these are WBS's and then we have the tasks I mean I would try and separate them so to make them clear Printing and do the same here. Call it WBS. And let's do that and see how it runs in here. So, uh, uh, yeah, okay, so here we go. So these are the WBS elements, these are the task uh, the task elements which we have name and then ID and so on and so forth. Um, if you're enjoying this topic and you want me to continue, please do let me know so I can just produce more of these videos. We can still talk about resources, activity codes, and um, calendars, and any other topics. Please let me know what, which topics that you're interested in in order to discuss them in our next sessions. Thanks a lot for, uh, thanks a lot for everyone, and bye for now.